I am delighted to be here today to greet and meet all of you as your new appointed health minister. It is obvious that government has made decisions to reshuffle, which I believe are changes that will make a difference and could not be more apt given the challenges which the health system and all health providers are facing. Let me begin by acknowledging and thanking my predecessor, fellow minister, Honorable Tuitama Leo, Dr. Talale Tuitama, for the hard work that he has done for health resilient to change. And as the Minister of Health for two days, it is a privilege to be part of the health portfolio. I would like to thank Tuitama for the hard work that he has done for health, not only as health minister for the past eight years, but as a medical practitioner for over 50 years of his life. What an unmatched service. I would also like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the contribution you all make to the health service. Thank you for the dedication, value, and commitment you bring across the spectrum of the health system. I know that you might often feel that your work goes unsung, but I want to assure you that it does not go unnoticed. You and your teams bring all the different parts of the system together to deliver services for patients. The health service needs capable, committed, motivated and experienced managers to deliver on day-to-day -day management and to provide the leadership and change management so critical to meeting the increasing demands on our health service. But let's also acknowledge that we are a long way from where we should be. I see no contradiction between praising the positives and being honest about what we all know to be true, that we still have a long way to travel. I know no one in health service who would say that waiting times to see doctors or for clinical procedures are where they should be. No. I know no one who will say that we are meeting all the needs that our fellow citizens have a right to expect and should be met. No one wants a better health service more than the frontline staff who work in it. No one wants a better health service, but let's also be honest enough to acknowledge that the problems in the health service can't be fixed overnight. There are no magic bands. There are no quick fixes. To build the health service that we all want and that our people deserve requires us to have a strategy and a plan and to work day and night to make the changes that we all know need to be made. So I was speaking with the um, chief executive officer yesterday and I hinted to him some of the important things, two, three, that we'll, we will kick off with. Um, so first, I beg you, let's go ahead and minimize complaints. I am not a doctor, nor a nurse, or a health professional, but I thought it would be useful to take the opportunity to set out what I see as the approach that we need to adopt if we are to develop the health service that our country and our people deserve. Firstly, Let's acknowledge that there has been a lot of complaints against our service from patients, relatives, and families of patients. As a strategy, we need to work hard on our attitudes, our work ethics, and especially how to relate and communicate to the patients and families. We have to admit that these complaints can be minimized and reversed. Emuliani foli aonioli, o folinga, tausafia fatinoil malwenga, 
malauka mo e fusi mai le o mafakia e lo faku makoko e lo loko le alofa. And secondly, I would like to create a happy working environment. I want to be friends with all of you inside this room. Because if you're not happy, so why should I bother? So Tofa and I, management and the leaders of the ministry, we beg of you, whatever the problems that we've been facing uh, all the past, please, let's work together. Let's acknowledge that every day, up and down this country, the staff in a health service do amazing work. Let's agree that not everything in a health service is a crisis. Let's not ignore the hard work, the dedication, the skill, the commitment, and the sheer excellence that you can find in our health service on any given day. Let's applaud the many examples of innovation and reform that can be found across the health service. These don't happen every day, and to make it happen every day or most days of the working week, a happy working environment can make wonders. Our staff need to be happy, and our working environment, whether in the clinics, the wards, the operating room, and offices, need to be user-friendly. And thirdly, I was told, I had it in mind as, but I was told, clean the hospital, Faimalo. So that's from my boss. Clean the hospital. This is where the people come and they know exactly what's going on. They want to come and see a beautiful hospital, clean and everything nice and shiny. We all want that in our own families. So to build a better health service, cleanliness is a basic component of health because it's a reflection of our service to our country and our visitors from overseas. Here again, let's be honest. This is not something at which we excel here in Samoa. Hospital cleanliness speaks a million words and it, it, it invites trust and confidence in those seeking care. What we have to do now is to build around it a process of planning and implementation that will start to translate this into concrete change and the change into reality very, very soon. We are good at drawing up plans, but sticking up to the hard work of implementation is not our greatest attribute. I don't intend to let that happen with this, and we are going to drive forward with these few things for now to start off with. The remerge of the NHS into the MOF is the government strategy to achieve a healthy Samoa. And its heart is reorientating the health service towards a high quality integrated system, providing care on the basis of need and accessibility a universal system providing the right care in the right place at the right time provided by the right people. So we're also looking at getting the right people to do the right job. And to achieve that goal, we have set out a wide range of recommendations. Some of them are things we are working on already. Some will require considerable work to get underway. The idea that the vast bulk of health services should be provided in a primary health care setting should start happening. It's not a new idea and we are making progress in this area. But we have to do more and do it more quickly. We need to engage our communities, develop new contracts with general practitioners which promotes treatment of chronic conditions in a primary care setting. 
We need primary care teams to be at the heart of systems of integrated care. And we need to develop a new model of community nursing, which will put some of the most skilled professionals in our health service, nurses, working directly in our communities. As leaders of the healthcare system, the challenge to us is to respond in kind. In the meantime, I will personally work with the Associate Minister of Health, the Director General, and all the health leaders in planning and approach. I have promised myself that I will report back to government in six months' time on the work we are doing, translating this into action. As one of the famous United States President Dwight Eisenhower once famously said, the plan is nothing if there's no implementation. So we plan, 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 and sit the plans on the shelves. So it's a waste of time. In conclusion, I have to admit that few areas of our national life are as complex as health. If we are to reform our health services, we must bring people together to share and learn, to drive innovation and to deliver the best care for patients and their families. What we need is unity of purpose and clarity of direction. I am hopeful and confident that the work of everyone in this room today will contribute to helping us deliver on this goal. I look forward to working together with you all as we move to improve our health services and the provision of care to our people. I wish you all a productive and enjoyable day. So if you want my